So John, our bench is all prepared. We are ready to start our experiment. We've got everything laid out really nicely and we're ready to go. What are we going to do? Well, I'm going to make a um, spread plate. Right. I'm going to take some culture uh -huh. and I'm going to put it onto this nutrient agar plate and I'm going to spread it over to make a thin film. Mm -hmm. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these uh, multi-discs that contains a number of different antibiotics. Right. And what I'm hoping is that one or two or three or maybe all of these antibiotics will have an inhibitory effect on the growth of the microorganism. Right. So the first thing I need to do is to aseptically take some of that culture and put it on there. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got a rather nice micro pipette here mm -hmm. and I'm going to take 100 microliters of that culture and I'm going to use sterile tips that are in this bottle here. I need to turn the Bunsen so I've got just a nice gentle roar mm -hmm. and I've got a nice upward draft and I'm going to work close to the Bunsen. I'm now ready to go. I hold the top mm -hmm. in my little finger, flame the neck of the bottle and tap on a tip. Flame the neck of the bottle and return the top. I do exactly the same with the culture. Mm -hmm. Hold the top, turn the bottle. Push down to the first position and suck up 100 microliters of this culture. Flame the neck, return the top. And I gently open the lid and squirt the culture on the top. Place the tip in the disinfectant solution, mm -hmm. a little sidebar that will get rid of it. And now I'm ready to spread that over the surface. Yep. I've got a sterile spreader mm -hmm. in this pack. I need to remember to open the right end. Of course. And then I can take out the spreader. If the force is with me. Yes, here we go. Out comes the spreader. And I'm gently going to spread that culture over the surface. Now I've got a little technique which just gently pulls the plate round. But if you were demonstrating it to the pupils, or you're getting the pupils to do it, you may just get them to move the mm -hmm. spread around. But I try not to place my hand over the top, because yep. I don't want body cells and bacteria from my hand falling off. Sure. When I'm ready, I just close it like that. Then I place that into the disinfectant solution. And the secret is to take my antibiotic discs and to place them on as soon as I can. Now, I need one of your forceps. You I'm you glad, help yourself. wonderful, help thank yourself. you. I've got to take the end off, take out the forceps, and I can very carefully lift that up, place it onto the, right in the very middle, and I'm just going to gently touch the disc so that it sits on the agar. Yep. Once I've done that, I can put the lid back on. Now, if, if we were preparing that in a, in a prep room or something, could we spread the plates first and then take them into the classroom for the, for the lesson, or? If you leave the culture for any length of time, right. it will start to grow. Okay. And the zones you see are very pure, mm -hmm. are, very, uh, are not very clear. Mm -hmm. And so what I would tend to do would be to get the pupils to put the culture on and spread sure. it, and then to put the disc on. Of course. Or if it's done about five, ten minutes before the class come, okay. But if you leave it for any length of time, the culture will grow and the zones you get won't be clear Can't be at all. clear. Okay. People may say to me, well, these micro pipettes are very expensive. They we, are, that's We true. don't have one of those. Mm -hmm. Well, the other way that you can do it is that you can use pasta pipettes in a boiling tube. Mm -hmm. And I've got an ordinary one mil syringe with a little bit of silicon mm -hmm. tubing. All I do is take off the top, flame the neck, ease out a pasta pipette, flame the neck, return the top. And then if I put the teat on, or put the uh, silicon tube tubing on like that, I can then draw up the culture and I can put it onto the Petri dish. And, that, and that's when you're doing your spread plate? And that's when I'm before. doing my spread plate. And that is a much cheaper way than having to use sure. an expensive micro pipette. Okay, so we've seen what you've done here using the multi-disc, so what I'm going to do is do a very similar technique, but right. using some filter paper discs and picking up the different an antimicrobial solutions that we can use. So 
Can I just ask you just to change your Vincent back to yeah. yellow for uh, me just now? That's brilliant. And we'll get on and, and start doing what you did a spread plate, John. Mm. I want to try and do this using a pour plate. Now we've right. shown how to do pour plates before, so I'll just run through it very quickly. So I'll turn my Vincent on to the blue flame. I have my culture, it's an E. coli culture. I've got my pasta pipettes which have been sterilised in this boiling tube. And I've got my teats ready to use. Right. Okay, so take the cotton wool bung out the top. I like the way you turn that. It makes it easier, doesn't it? Yeah, it's much easier to get them out that way. So I'll just again, just turning it to put that on there. All the time making sure that I'm not touching the, the mouth of the pipette, okay. obviously, because yeah. we want to make sure that the, the sterility is maintained. Yes. Now, because what we're doing, I'll just, again, take some culture. Now, how many microliters was it you, that you used for your pour well, plate? Well, I use 100 for it, Right, now, what I'm going to do with the, this pour plate is because the culture is going to be dispersed throughout the agar, I'm going to put right. a bit more. I'm going to aim right. for about 250 right. microliters, which is probably about five drops yes. of this culture. So I'll just put it on carefully. One, two, three, four, five drops of culture. And I'm just going to dispose of my pipette into the bottle. There we go. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to help myself to some molten nutrient agar that I've got here. And I'm just going to make sure that I remove the water from the outside of the, of the bottle. Because uh, yes. if that drops in, you're going to get contamination. Yeah, we'd have contamination yeah. issues. Um, again, maintaining sterile technique, removing the lid from the from the bottle of agar, right. flaming it, and pouring it into the bottle there. Yeah. We're not going to reuse that agar, but just as standard practice, I would tend to just flame anyway. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just gently give, give it a little shiggle, just move that, that agar around right. and make sure that the culture's mixed in there. Just move some things out of the way here. Now, normally we would sit and wait for this to set. Now, right. I don't have time to do that just now. So handily, I have some nutrient agar just here with some E. coli culture already through it and I've labelled it as such. Right. Now, as I say, what, what we're going to do is take some, uh, some sterile filter paper discs right. and infuse them with some disinfectant. So I've got four different things that I want to use today. Now, would you be so kind as to pass me your scissors there, John? Well, I've got some sterile forceps inside um, one of these stereo reel bags. Right. Again, making sure that I open the bag at the right side. Now, inside here I've got some sterile paper discs that have been autoclaved and I'll very carefully remove them. Now, what I should really have done is open this before I help myself to the forceps, but making sure that I don't touch anything but with you're them. you're working and close to the and bunch. And so working so yeah, exactly. I'm microbes and stuff are going upwards, so we've got to... Now, in here, I've got these little paper discs. I've been very careful. Now, so just keeping that closed. I'm going to take my disc, and first of all, I'm going to be working with some sterile water. Right. That's just going to be our control. So. Dipping it in. The benefit here is we've just got enough water to cover the disc. Right. And I will very carefully place it on the plate. Okay. Now, we shouldn't have contaminated these at all. We're looking, working with a, a sterile um, water and sterile um, filter paper, but I'll just put them to the side. I'm going to take an, a new set of forceps right. to, okay. to use for the other disinfectant. Yeah. Well, we don't want any yeah. cross-contamination, but also I, d I don't really want to put them into to the Vircon, so I've, I've been really careful not to contaminate them anyway. But we'll take a fresh set of forceps and start again. This time we're using ampicillin, John. Um, right. Now, it's an antibiotic that maybe you've been prescribed at the doctor's, perhaps. Um, and we've just made it up in for lab use. So I'm going to 
the same thing again. We'll take our... Yeah, it's in a little plastic tube. Yeah, we've, we've got right. it just made up, so it's not in tablet form. It's, 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 it's made up in a liquid form right. to the working concentration again. Right. So we've got this liquid, and I'm just going to infuse it into the disc. Right. Now, very, very carefully. Again, dip in the disc in. See that there? And I'm not completely waterlogging it. Just enough... So it's just damp, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, just damp in the disc. I'm going to put it a suitable distance away. And again, putting that onto the to the agar plate. All right. The next one. We've already talked about using vircon in the lab as a disinfectant. But how effective is it against <laughs> against the E. coli yeah, that we're we, using we, we today? We tell the pupils, it? <laughs> so we want to test it and make sure it's all right. right. So that's going to be the next disinfectant. So again, no. And I've just got, again, the normal standard Vircon that we're using as a working concentration. I've just got in this beaker, dipping it in there, and then onto my plate. Brilliant. Right. The last one that we use is iodine. Iodine. Have you ever right. used iodine for anything yes, before, I John? Yes, as a child, a tincture of iodine, bought from the chemist, was... And what would you Always use available. That? What would you use if, it if for? If I had cut myself or grazed myself, it would have been dabbed on to All make right. sure I didn't get an infection. So we want to have a little look at how, how useful that is, how, how well it works right. against um, our microbe of choice today, which is E. coli. So my last filter paper disc. Should I flame this? I would. You because would? If I'm doing it with the pupils, I get them it's to get standard it's technique. Standard technique, standard technique. So and I'm they don't forget. Okay. Flame, dip, flame. Right. So I just get that onto my disc, and I'll flame it again. Okay. So that's the last one in our series. Now, I'd be very careful just to make sure that this is all clearly labelled. But other than that, that that's that's the setup of this experiment, right. and we'll go on to to look at incubation. In a minute. Now, is there anything else that have you got any other techniques that you might use to do this type of experiment, John? You you could. I mean, we've we've pipetted the. Um, if you pipet the liquid on, there, yeah. there is a problem. One of the problems is that it tends to diffuse all over the place. Yeah. But what you can do is you can take an agar plate, uh -huh. and we can take your discs. Now, have you got oh, your, yeah. Would your you little like some discs disc? there? Can I turn my bin off? I'm, I'm pretty much finished with it right. just now. And I'll just turn mine so that we've got a nice upward draft. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get this ready, and do you have a, another pair of forceps for me? I do, and you can also have my scissors. There we go. Thanks, great. And what I'm going to do is exactly what you did. I'm going to take the little discs out, and place them there. One there and one here. I'm only going to do two. I'm going to use one as a control. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to use is a pasta pipette. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take out a pasta pipette. And I'm going to use this teat pipette, and I'm going to take a little bit of water mm -hmm. from here, again using good aseptic technique, hold the top, turn the bottle, suck a little of the liquid up, flame it, and return it. And all I'm going to do now is just touch the surface, so that a little bit of the water soaks mm -hmm. into the disc. When I finish with it, I'll put it over there. And I can do exactly the same with other solutions. Mm -hmm. The secret is that if you just let it gently touch the surface, some of the liquid will come out and it will be held in place mm -hmm. by the disc. One of the problems that happens, if you just put the liquid and the pupils move the plate, it just rolls all yeah. over the place yeah. and you don't see anything. So we've now got the possibility of using lots of forceps, or yep. if we haven't got lots of forceps and autoclaving is a problem, then you can do a pack of pasta pipettes and you can just use them 
to use exactly the same solutions as you do. So we've got to make sure that we don't put too much on the discs, though. We've so got to make not sure we've got that excess liquid. I've actually found that 10 microliters is an ideal volume. Okay. Again, if you've got a nice micro pipette, you can turn it to 10 mm -hmm. microliters and you can suck up 10 microliters and put them on. Or just use the end of the pasta. Yeah. Pipette. That's great. We've now got to incubate these. Oh, okay. Right. What temperature would we incubate these places? Well, at? we have a choice. Right. We could either just leave them in the prep room or in the laboratory, uh -huh. and if it's the summer, mm -hmm. it's usually quite warm, mm -hmm. and we would see results in 24 to 48 hours. If we've got an incubator, we can set it from anything between 25 and 30 mm -hmm. and happily incubate overnight. Probably 24 to 48 hours later, we'll get the best results we're going mm -hmm. to get. Mm -hmm. Of course, we do need to remember to turn them upside down. Ah, of course. And that's why the little discs are really valuable because they hold that the solution in place. in place and stop it running all over right. the place. Right. And for the likes of the, the the pour plate and the spread plate, we've got to make sure that our, our cultures are dry as well. In that case, is that right? Yes, it is. If if they ha if the culture hasn't soaked in, then the problem is as soon as you put the discs on, or you put and it's just going to run all mm -hmm. over the place. Mm -hmm. But normally, the way that pupils work. They do this, do that, do that. The plates are fairly dry when they come to put the discs on. Okay. So during a lesson, it shouldn't be a major problem. Mm -hmm. Okay.